What we're dealing with here is a complete lack of respect for the law. Hi everybody and a warm welcome back to Maple Leaf Customs in Switzerland. I'm Andrew and on the bench today you can see a plethora of tractor trailers that I've accumulated over the last four years since I got into the hobby and here are some trailers to go behind them. There's hardly a matched set in this whole bunch, so I took two different pieces that do go together fairly well, although not originally. I'm going to work with these today. This is a Matchbox Peterbilt cab. You can see I'm missing some headlights on the front grill right there. Other than that, it's not in bad shape. 1981. Okay, on the back, also matchbox, is what they call a low bed trailer. Now this one's done up in Ferrari livery, obviously. But look at this, I've got matching wheels, so that's the biggest bonus. And they fit together just fine and once I'm finished with these they'll look like a set and it's my entry for the diecast international builders 18 wheels a rolling invitational and see what I've got to work with nice solid cast in from nearly 50 years ago got sufficient detail on there oh the dreaded yellow glass oh well and between the stacks, <laughs> there's a driver in an old chrome interior. How realistic. Original wheels, I think I'll probably keep those and make use of them. And an old chrome chassis underneath. Gas tanks, front grill. Yeah, gotta do a little repair work. All right, that's the front end. Let's see what the Ferrari package looks like. I've drilled out the rivets that hold this together. That's a metal base. There's hardly a mark on it. Okay, the retainer for the two back axles. Again, matching set. And I hope nobody's counting. I got 10 wheels in my 18 <laughs> wheels of rolling casting. This is plastic. I'm glad the doors are included. They often go missing. And it's also in pretty good shape. I'm going to use this well-known movie tractor trailer as my inspiration today. We are eastbound and down with Jerry Reed, the snowman, from Smokey and the Bandit, a favorite movie from the 70s. Now, first things first, a personal note to the purists out there. If you're a real fan of the movie, you know it's a Kenworth, and this is a Peterbilt, but it's got a sleeper on the back, and to me, a cab is a cab. The trailer is the wrong kind, I've got a low bed, you know, there's a... <laughs> a lot of discrepancies here. In fact, I'll give you a dollar if you can find two things that are the same to the movie. So, you don't have to tell me in the comments. Let's roll with it. A note to the realist, use what you've got and have fun with it. That's what I'm trying to do today. And while we're at it, that's not a picture of the real Fred in my thumbnail. That's just a generic old basset hound. <laughs> Smokey and the Bandit is a 1977 American action comedy film starring Burt Reynolds as good old boy Bo Bandit Darville and Jerry Reed as Cletus Snowman Snow. 
two bootleggers attempting to illegally transport 400 cases of Coors beer from Texarkana to Atlanta. While the snowman drives the truck carrying the beer, the bandit drives point in a 1977 Pontiac Trans Am to distract the Smokies and keep the attention off the snowman. During their run, they are comically pursued by Sheriff Buford T. Justice, played by Jackie Gleason. R.I.P. to so many of the stars of the show. It's just a fantastic bunch of great memories. We won't even talk about Smokey and the Bandit 2 or Part 3. They should be struck from the record. You noticed that I didn't paint strip the Ferrari trailer because it was plastic, so I just cleaned it up, primed it in white, masked off the two sides where the large murals will go, and I give it a matte black top coat using Tsunami Force spray cans today. And about 20 minutes later, I can carefully unmask it. And you see that leaves the white background for the large custom murals. Pretty easy process. As usual, I want to give you a preview or two of what's coming up on my channel so that you won't miss anything. All you've got to do is hit the subscribe button. It's absolutely free. That helps me out a lot to keep providing good content for you on a regular basis. I'm not monetized here at Maple Leaf Customs, but if you'd like to support the channel, you can use paypal.me slash maple leaf customs. Thank you. There's the snowman wreaking havoc on a no good motorcycle gang. And the bandit running interference. Did you know that the director, Hal Needham, was better known in the industry as a stuntman? And this was his directorial debut. Needham's actually the one who drove the Trans Am in the jump over the dismantled Mulberry Bridge. Here's where you place your bets on to whether or not I can lay this giant mural down in one piece or not. Success. I just found these on Google Images, scaled them to size, and I was quite pleased that it went so well. How about the other side? Looks like I'm two for two today. No problemo. The decals on the cab were actually much more challenging than this part was. There were no murals on the back doors in the film, but I thought they looked pretty good, so I mocked up a couple of desert picks to go here. A little bit of freestyling. And the trailer's pretty well finished. Tickety-boo! Today's community showdown goes to an online buddy of mine, Mark Anthony's Customs. I'd like to introduce you to his work. You can follow the link in the description to find his YouTube channel. Tell him that you came by from Maple Leaf Customs. Thank you. Much has been written about how Pontiac supplied four 1977 Trans Ams and two Pontiac Le Mans four-door sedans for the movie. The Trans Ams were actually 76 model cars with 1977 front ends, and they all got trashed in the filming. But did you know that Snowman's truck was a Kenworth W900A short frame, equipped with a 38-inch sleeper? The murals were 48 feet long and manufactured by Hobbs Trailers in Texas with a non-operational Thermal King refrigeration unit. This is obvious because there's no fuel tank on the underside of the trailer to power the unit. Kind of like my own. I just used a control key from an old keyboard. Nothing gets thrown out. Now to focus on the cab. There were so many Google images that I could download because it's such a popular film. I lay down ghost white decals first because of the black body on the cab. And when those are cured up and clear coated, then I can put on the top coat gold layer. The trick here was to work with all of the rivets and to keep the pinstripes distinct and clear. 
You can see my headlight repair. And how many experts know what this red badge is at the top of the grill? I just converted a Peterbilt into a Kenworth. I hope you're okay with that. Those details are looking very good, I think. Now for some minutia, including the amber lights on top of the cab. And Jerry Reed gets a full makeover here, too, with a yellow shirt and a pair of brown pants. Time to put it all back together. The yellow glass pops in, the interior, the driver, the seats, and the exhaust stacks go in one piece. No Fred in there, though. Three axles matching the trailer fit there. I didn't touch them up at all. And the chassis, where only the front grille got worked on. All snug as a bug in a rug. And I can lock it down. This was great fun because of my memories of the film. I'm sure so many of you can share that experience. Just about finished and I thought, hey, I should put some air brakes on here. So I twist the finest piece of wire that I've got around a little paint stick and stretch it out. And look at that. Pretty authentic. Let's have a closer look. Even though I started out with a Peterbilt cab and a low bed trailer, neither of which is true to the film, I used what I had and I think that you would recognize this as the snowman's big rig from Smokey and the Bandit. I did my best to focus on the most recognizable of the details, including the graphics up front. And of course, the very recognizable mural on the back. Did you ever notice it's a bandit holding up a stagecoach? You're welcome. Back doors are functional, a couple of rhinestones for taillights and maple leaf custom license plates. There's the non-functional refrigeration unit. It all clicks together, and there's freedom of movement for full turning, which is important. Remember, I had to start with mismatched pieces, although both matchbox pieces from 1981. And here's the snowman's big rig. I'm pleased with how this one turned out. Ten wheels instead of eighteen, oh well. I hope I didn't DQ myself because of that. I think it turned out really nicely, and I hope you enjoyed watching this with good memories of a great film. <laughs> I still laugh whenever I rewatch it. Thanks to the Diecast International Builders for hosting this event. Be sure to catch all the other builds. Come on back soon, and often, it's coffee time.